Nick Pericles has been on a tear lately. At Watkins Glen, he led the most laps in his race en route to an engine failure. At Waltham, he led the most laps in his race en route to a third place finish. And now he gets the pole here in Granby. Zane Davidson starts on the outside. That's his best career starting position. Al Lagasse up to third, now looking for second into turn three. Experienced dirt track ace Bill Littlejohn has been looking forward to this race for a little while. Was also looking forward to Waltham. Didn't quite get the performance he was looking for. Got vastly outperformed by his teammate and daughter Prudy. But uh, Bill stuck in the high line for now. Caution's out uh, very early on lap three. Andreas Allen stuck right at the top of the racetrack. Guerra goes even higher. Andreas tries to drop a lane, but Henry Williams is there. And Andreas Allen goes for a little bit of a spin. Mifuni Sanjiro spins trying to avoid Andreas. And everyone else manages to get on the brakes mighty well to avoid those two spinning cars. Real shame for Allen. He was one of the fastest drivers the whole weekend. Just didn't have the qualifying effort to back it up. And uh, those are the things that can kind of happen to you early on in the hornet's nest. Pericles brings the field back to the green flag. He's led every lap so far. Legacy takes a look down low, but can't get the move to stick. Acovito restarts third. One of the race winners in Waltham uh, was he, and now he's trying to succeed on a vastly different racetrack. Tyler Faber looking down low in the 900. He hasn't had a lot of good finishes lately. Sits around 70th in points as things stand. Not That won't be the case if he can finish up in third position where he currently occupies. Al Lagasse still fighting on the bottom of the racetrack and he will take over the lead from the 84. Baskinger also carrying the momentum from Waltham up into the podium. Joshua Sikuli following him through. Sikuli hasn't had a lot of luck on these short tracks. In fact, rolled his car over at Jennerstown, but he is going for it today. Now up the inside of the 10 as Acovito takes the lead from Legacy. New drivers inside the top 10 include Small Nozomi, who if this top 10 effort can continue, well, that will be her best career effort. Uh, that's John Gamut who's cracked the top 10 in the five machine, the 12 of Shelly in to the top 10 as well. Same with Demir Bejenov, he's won some dirt track and short track races over the course of his career. William Duncan in the 83 also on his way forward. Daniel Voyles started this race fourth. He's on his way backwards. Ali Nelson gets real loose off a of turn two. Keeps that thing going though and will continue to try and make a pass. Gambit was on the bottom of around a lap ago. Not so much anymore. Nearly into the wall actually off of turn four. Sikuli managed to lead a few laps, but now it's Legacy back to the front of the pack. Davidson trying to make his way into second as we're three and four wide uh, for around 10th on back. A lot of hungry drivers in this pack, and Wes Jones gives a little bit of a tap to the 26 of PJ Williams. That sends him around down the racetrack, made a little bit of contact with Mark Hankins. Uh, no harm, no foul there. Everybody keeps it straight except for Williams who spins into the pits. That will be caution too. Legacy returns him to the green, but Seguli says not so fast. In the number two Copart machine, he's got the lead before they even hit the back straight. Zane Davidson trying to follow him through. He's up the inside of the number 01. Can Legacy shut the door into the corner? Not quite. The nine holding tough on the short side of the racetrack. Pericles sits in fourth. Some surprises at the tail of the field. Justin Carter ran well at Concord and Jennerstown, but can't seem to go anywhere in that 85 Welsh's machine so far, running 37th. Tristan Wilhoyt got his season off to a great start, ended up being second in points at his peak, but since then has fallen to around 20th in points. PJ Williams in the 26th trying to recover from his earlier spin. Derek Hamill in 40th with Zachary Fitzwater Sr., who damn near won the thing at Pocono, sitting 41st. Sam Curtis, for the second race in a row, goes out due to an engine failure early on. Uh, that will put him 42nd. As Justin Carter spins the 85, going into turn one, he gets up into the air, and the 85 goes for a little bit of a 
tumble but doesn't roll the car surprisingly and Tevia Kingray and Sylvian Lasavage also get a piece that's caution three out on the racetrack. Sikuli led the way for the 10 laps preceding the caution. Nobody out of the race from that last incident, although Derek Hamill ended up coming into the pits due to a blown tire. They ended up having to make some repairs on that car and he ended up falling a lap down under the caution, completely unrelated to the accident happening around him though, as Al Lagasse and Zayden Davidson will race for second. Sikuli seems really strong in that two car. No one seems to be able to get to his back bumper. Pretty close call on the restart between Rowe and Nelson in the 96. They both keep it going straight despite some contact, uh, sending both of them down to the inside on the back straight. Approaching the halfway point, DJ Curtis and Joshua Michaels are definitely the candidates for hard charger of the race. Curtis started 28th and is up to 12th place with his most recent pass on Acevedo, while Michaels now resides well inside the top 10 after starting 33rd. Oh, Lester down to the bottom after contact with Zinovsky. I think he saved it though, and they'll stay green. Andreas Allen up to 24th behind Lucas Knight in the number 39. He's on a bit of a recovery run after crashing his car earlier on, but uh, has been doing well to get by drivers like John Gambit and Jokey Leffen, and along with Bill Littlejohn in the 30, he was continuing to have a pretty mediocre effort. Doesn't appear to be anything aesthetically wrong with the 03 of Antivia Kingray, but that is definitely not the same car that started the day. He's going a lap down to the top 10 already as Henry Williams throws in underneath Casey Lester, somehow manages to get the move stick. And TV King Ray's been a pretty gracious back marker running the outside, but might be in a bit of a pickle as Williams uses King Ray to get by Lester. Lester trying to get down to the inside of him, but King Ray goes around off a of contact from Lester Hankins with a near spin as well, manages to save the car, but King Ray down into the end of the pit wall. Not nearly as hard of a hit as Annie Thomas took in race number one, but that car spewing smoke down in turn number three. Sikuli brings him back to the line to begin lap number 63 and get this race back under green flag conditions. No one's been able to challenge Sikuli for the last few dozen laps, but this is a good chance for Faber, the New Jerseyite in the Morristown game vault machine. He's got it run on the bottom of the racetrack and he shoves Sikuli a little bit wide. Davidson's still holding on to the final podium spot with Nick Pericles trying to get by Joshua Michaels who from 33rd is now up inside the top five as is DJ Curtis though now as well. Faber still inside Sikuli. Sikuli was nearly able to shut the door uh, about a half a lap or so ago but just couldn't quite get it done and Faber leads at the line, Davidson looking to all the way down to the bottom, squeezing right up against the inside wall uh, in the number nine machine. He gets the spot from both Sikuli and Faber. Things getting awfully heated for second place on back. That's DJ Curtis trying to make it work on the low side of the racetrack. He's underneath Sikuli and Faber, and it looks like he's gonna get second out of it. 37 cars still on the lead lap. Hamill, the only driver on the racetrack who's not, he is one lap down. Duncan and Cortez went out of the race from engine failures on the last caution. Other than that, it's just Antivia Kingray who was went out from the latest accident and Sam Curtis who gets his second straight last place finish after blowing up very early on. The Aussie may succumb to Curtis in the 33 who's been roaring up the inside of the track. A lot of drivers have been struggling with corner exit speed, but certainly not Curtis. The 01 of Legacy back into a podium spot. He's never really fallen out of the top dozen or so cars this whole race. And what a turnaround effort it would be for Legacy's season uh, if he could get it done today. Uh, Legacy has been started well in a lot of races, but always seems to fall to the midfield or further. Davidson's got the spot back, but perhaps not for long. Legacy running the extreme inside of the racetrack. I don't think Davidson thought he left the door open there, but he sure did. Apparently, Legacy to the race lead. Curtis in the wall in number 33. He's going to lose a lot of spots. Fall outside the top five just like that. First to sixth in about one lap. 
Joshua Michaels in the 04 now looking on the bottom of the racetrack. Kyle Collins into the top five after starting 38th out of nowhere in the Musco lighting, number 48. Michaels trying to hold off Legacy on the outside, but he's got Sikuli back to the bottom of the racetrack. Sikuli was very strong in the midsection of the course, and if he can continue that, uh, that run in the number two, then he may just go home with a victory. Michaels once again challenging Sikuli, but what a run by Collins on the bottom of the racetrack. He's been really strong in the center of the corner. That's got him to the front of the pack. They made some adjustments after qualifying, and uh, they seem to have worked because he is now in the race leads of more and more drivers getting into the outside wall when they get pushed up the track. I think there's a lot of marbles up there, uh, a lot of nasty dirt that just doesn't carry some of the grip that the rest of the track has. Now it's Alexander Road to the bottom of the racetrack trying to fight Kyle Collins for it. Three wide for eighth. It's Baskinger, Knight, and the Legacy racing for it. Knight throws it in, but too hard as he gets it sideways. And the 01 and the eighth go into the wall. Caution not out for this, but significant damage to both of those cars. I don't imagine they will race the same as they once did. Real shame for Legacy in particular. Usually it does tend to be his fault that he falls through the pack. This time, innocent bystander. Caution is out for something else, though. Sikuli completely boxed in on the high line in the number two. He is running seventh, got a tap from behind from Curtis, slides down to the inside of the track, makes a little bit of contact with the wall. Not very much damage at all. Doubt he'll need to make a pit stop to repair that. He won't even lose too many spots because they took the caution immediately afterwards. He'll get most of his positions back. In fact, hard to say whether it will impair Sikuli's ability to uh, go for the win. Just 14 laps for Alexander Rowe to hold off the rest of the field. A lot of hungry drivers behind him. Gets a really good restart. He went really early back in turn number four. And I think that caught Pericles off guard as he's back around five car lengths off the bumper of the 36. Thaber's all over the back of the 84. 84 goes down to protect, and that's exactly what Alexander Rowe wants to see. If he can pull away from these guys, they might not be able to challenge him if the caution doesn't come out again. Typically a road ringer, Caitlin Sang has done well to get herself in the top 10 in the number 07. Small Nozomi tries to dive to the inside where there was no room. Caitlin Sang with save of the day probably in the 07, nearly hits the inside wall, manages to get that thing back up onto the racetrack without really losing a position. Might lose the spot to Nozomi after all, but overall that's about the best thing you can hope for as a driver when you get turned off of a corner like that. The pole sitter, Pericles, challenges Rowe for the lead. Faber and Davidson still right behind, but they're battling hard for third. They made some contact off of turn number four there. Rowe will be stuck on the outside line. Haven't seen too much of Pericles since the opening few laps that he led, but Pericles back up front when it counts. Hard racing for 27th between Fitzwater, Allen, and Jones as Allen takes his second spin of the day. And Wes Jones, that's the second car he's turned around today. Jones has been mighty aggressive in the 404 car. That's his last race in that car for the next little while as Christchurch will take over for the international tour. But it has not been Andreas Allen's race at all, and he was really looking forward to this one. Real shame he got spun into the pit lane this time. Pace car back in and just five laps remaining for Nick Pericles to hold off Faber and Davidson, the other members of the podium. They always seem to be there when we head to the caution periods. It's kind of odd, actually. Kyle Collins in the 48 challenging Davidson. He's got a long way to go if he's going to go after Pericles for the win. Faber with a peek down low on the back straight on Nick Pericles, and he may have the lead in the number 900 Pontiac coming to three to go. That's going to allow Kyle Collins to close right in on these top two, though. Mark Hankins runs fourth, racing hard with Zane Davidson and Alexander Rowe for that spot, and that may prevent those three boys from challenging these three for the race victory. Kyle Collins might have been overlooked by Tyler Thaber as he tried to fend off Nick Pericles because now he's got the bottom of the racetrack hostage. Nick Pericles trying to get down there, but Collins holds the spot very nicely on the bottom of the track. 
Faber still pushed high by Nick Pericles. Pericles might have another shot at Collins in the Musco machine as Collins leads at the white flag, but Pericles down low. Can Collins get back down to the bottom to defend? No, he outbreaks himself into that corner, and Pericles clear onto the back straight. Faber might be into second. Alexander Rowe nearly gets turned around by Joshua Michaels. Great save by Alexander Rowe to hold on to that fourth spot, but up front it's Pericles winning from pole in a very hard fought race here at Autodrome Granby. Faber gave it his best shot at the end there, but it wasn't quite enough. He'll have to settle for the runner up spot. Kyle Collins up 35 spots. Hard charger of the race, but I'm not quite sure that's what he was looking for after crossing the start finish line uh, with the lead at the white flag. Alexander Rowe manages to survive the last lap with a amazing save to finish fourth. Michaels rounds out the top five. Curtis finishes sixth and takes over the point lead. Grayson Acevedo backs up his win at Walton with a strong seventh place effort. Caitlin Sang, P8. Zayden Davidson falls to ninth. And John Gambit's going to round out the top ten.